Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. You, will you reach out to Iran, and how can that country be helpful, or is that like entering into a hornet's nest, because well, that will open, inflame the Sunnis? Uh, look, we're open to discussions uh, if there's something constructive that can be contributed uh, by Iran, if Iran is prepared to uh, do something that is going to respect the integrity and sovereignty of Iraq and the ability of the uh, government to reform. All right, folks, uh, welcome back. Of course, uh, the breaking news of the day is that the U.S. has uh, captured uh, Ahmed Abu Qatala uh, of uh, Ansar al-Sharia, uh, believed to be responsible for the plotting of the Benghazi attack. He's being transported back to the United States. That was John Kerry in response to a question from Katie Couric. Joining us now is Paul Wolfowitz, senior scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, former president of the World Bank and former deputy secretary of defense. Uh, sir, always great to talk to you. I wonder if Katala was mumbling about that video when they captured him. Yeah, <laughs> very, very, very interesting point. I'd love to know. Now, he, he's going to be brought to a civilian court. An indictment has been unsealed. Do um, you agree with that strategy? I, in a particular case, sometimes that makes sense. I don't believe that as a general matter uh, it's the right thing to do. And I guess one of the big questions will be, by doing that, are we surrendering our ability to get intelligence from him? This guy is a combatant in the terrorist war against the United States, and it's not over. And if the administration wants to pretend that it's over, that's very misleading, and it's impossible to develop smart policies when you proceed from false assumptions. Yeah, our ability to gain intelligence, certainly with drones taking out high-level terrorists and with the abolition of the CIA interrogation uh, unit, uh, has, severely, has been severely hampered, wouldn't you say? Well, and even just Guantanamo. I mean, they could have sent this guy to Guantanamo. They didn't have to read him his Miranda rights and put him in a civilian court. I'm sure they'll say they got something in return for the Miranda warning, but I doubt it. Doubt it very much. Let me ask you, sir, um, is Barack Obama to blame for where we are in Iraq today? Look, there are a lot of people to blame for where we are in Iraq today, and I think you have to unfortunately start with Prime Minister Maliki who everybody has been warning now for a number of years, uh, maybe not everybody, sorry. A lot of people outside the government, people with experience in Iraq have said this man is deepening sectarian divisions in Iraq stupidly and senselessly. I think um, we walked away from Iraq when we shouldn't have. I know that Maliki didn't seem to want to have an agreement to keep us there, but we didn't seem terribly e e eager to stay, and it, the result, I think, has greatly worsen the situation. And where do we go from here, do you believe? Uh, you just heard uh, the, the, uh, the video we played uh, leading into your interview, sir, uh, where John Kerry was asked about cooperation with Iran. Uh, do you believe that that is, A, smart, and that, B, with this administration, it's likely to happen? Well, I'm afraid with this administration, it might happen in all kinds of harmful ways. Look, Iran is a player in this, unfortunately. And I'm not saying it doesn't make sense to talk with them and find out what they're doing and perhaps warn them against some of the things they are doing. But the idea that seemed to be implied in some of Kerry's comments that they might actually want to play a so-called constructive role in Iraq, I think it's already clear what role they want to play in Iraq. And it's not constructive. So <clears throat> I think one has to worry about that a great deal. You know, people, and particularly people who don't want to do anything, and this includes both political parties, will keep referring to this as a Shia-Sunni conflict, and I defy you to find one of them who can explain to you what a Shia is or a Sunni. And it makes Americans say, well, that's just, to quote Neville Chamberlain's awful phrase, that's a quarrel in a faraway place among people about whom we know nothing. He was talking about Czechoslovakia before World War II, but you could just as well say it today about sectarian conflict. This is not just a sectarian conflict. This is al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is on the march back. It is not on the road to defeat, as the president has so often said. It is reviving and not, this by the way, started in Syria more than in Iraq, this latest episode. They're in Iraq, they're in Syria, they're in Libya, their Taliban allies are in Karachi and Pakistan. They are on the march, and we 
seem to want to just ignore it. Well, yes, and, and, and has our foreign policy played a part in that, the doing nothing, uh, in effect, in Syria after drawing the couple of red lines, what we did in overthrowing uh, Gaddafi in Libya? Um, I don't think that this played into this particular moment, but of course, uh, our, our participation or support of overthrowing Mubarak and replacing him at the time with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, um, it seems that there's a, a, constant, uh, a constant thread there. Well, look, I mean, I think it was right to help the Libyan people overthrow Gaddafi. The trouble was, as one of their leaders said, the U.S. declared mission accomplished prematurely. And I think he meant the irony of referring to that awful banner that was spread out for President Bush on the USS Abraham Lincoln declaring mission accomplished in Iraq prematurely. Libya started out pro-American and moderate in its politics. But the guys with the guns are the extremists, and the U.S. basically made no effort to help the new Libyan authorities create effective security forces, just as we've done nothing to help the moderates in Syria develop effective security capability. As far as I can tell, the only people fighting ISIS in Syria, the extremists in Syria, are the moderate Syrians. I think Assad is perfectly okay to have them take over some section of the country. Uh, he's cooperated with them in the past against us in Iraq. So we really need to be helping the people who are helping themselves to fight these extremists. And, and, and I think, and, unfortunately, to some extent, that means we, in this crisis, we have to help Maliki. But we need to make it clear that the continuation of his behavior that divides Iraqis that should be united in fighting the extremists, that behavior has to stop. So when you say help, uh, does that include boots on the ground? Does that include airstrikes? What does that include? Well, I think first and most importantly, it includes intelligence. We have incredible intelligence capabilities that have just disappeared since we left. And I, I mean, we're not talking about one of the world's most powerful armies that's taken Mosul and taken Tal Afar. This is, from what one can tell, a very well-organized armed mob. And just being able to track their movements on the ground would be a huge asset. Yeah. I certainly, if, if I were advising the president, I certainly would not rule out the use of American air power. But the goal, should, the real fighting should be done with, by Iraqis. But American support can give them the spine to fight, as it did in 2007, when Maliki himself took on Muqtad al-Sadr, the, the proxy of Iran, and went charging down to Mosul, actually against our advice to take on this Iranian stooge. And he succeeded in no small measure because we held his back. We're Mr. not there to hold his back anymore. Mr. Wolfowitz, always great to talk to you, sir. Look forward to the next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Paul Wolfowitz, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming back with Tom Rogan, the columnist for the Daily Telegraph. Don't go away.